Hey guys, this is Undercover Dudes all the way from Down Under with my first look gameplay review of the new free to play first person shooter AVA Dog Tag. Now, if this game looks and sounds familiar, then you would be spot on. AVA Dog Tag is a reworked version of the classic free to play first person shooter Alliance of Valiant Arms. Throughout its years, the original AVA was just bloated with pay to win and redundant content, with the game going through multiple publishers and it just became a terrible mess. The core gameplay was fun, but everything around it was terrible. Introduce AVA Dog Tag, and holy shit, this is what I call a rework. Combat Arms Blackshot take note, because this is how you go and bring a game back to its roots and back to the core gameplay that everybody loved. I'm not even exaggerating here, all the fat has been trimmed back. Dog Tag is simply the most pure form of Alliance of Valiant Arms built for its hardcore player base that has stuck with the game for so many years. Now there is a lot to go and talk about here, but before we do, I need to talk about my ping. Currently, AVA Dog Tag has servers hosted in North America and Europe, and because I'm an Australian player, I'm getting a minimum 200 or 250 ping to the North American server. Any teleporting, glitches, or any type of lag that you see in this gameplay today is purely because of me and my connection, not the game itself. I checked out other gameplays on YouTube and people haven't been complaining about lag, so please go and keep that in mind when you're watching the gameplay today. Let's go and get into the bulk of this review, and the first thing I want to go and talk about is the fact that AVA Dog Tag is self-published by the original developers Red Duck, and that's such a breath of fresh air because they now call the shots, and you can already go and see this by their promise to ensure the game is not going to be pay to win. Right now in the closed beta, every weapon is unlocked, and there isn't even a shop, so I couldn't even go and give money to the developers if I wanted to. Now, I would love for this exact setup to be the exact same when the game goes into open beta. Because too many games nowadays, most recently Realm Rare, they monetize their testing periods with like a battle pass or something like that, or skins you can go and buy, just to go and make a quick buck when the game is actually supposed to be going through these big changes to try to work out the direction, but they're just too focused on getting money. What Red Duck has gone and done is said, okay, screw the money, we just want to go and make a good game, so what we're going to go and do is focus on actually making the game, and then the money will come later when people want to go and buy cosmetics when the game goes into full release, which is such a smart and intuitive idea. Moving on to the gameplay itself, that being movement, combat, etc., it seems extremely similar to normal AVA. However, it has been quite a while since I last played, so this might not be completely accurate. Regardless, the main differences in AVA Dog Tag are in the structure and content that surrounds the gameplay, which is exactly how a rework should be. Don't touch the part of the game people actually like. Now to be fair, they have been modifying aim punch and movement speed values, but this has been with the community's feedback to go and fine tune it to a golden point. So now for the stuff that they did change, and it's actually quite a big list. The first one, and the most noticeable one, is the new UI, which I absolutely love. It's super clean, easy to get into game, easy to change up your classes, super accessible and back to the basics. There's nothing flashy that we don't need. That point transitions perfectly into the updated graphics. Games like Combat Arms and its reloaded update suffered from a terrible graphics update, which killed frame rates because the devs wanted to make the game look as flashy as possible. Red Duck very much put the gameplay first here. The game isn't flashy, the frame rates are fantastic, and overall, it's a really nice coat of paint. For reference, the majority of the gameplay you're seeing today is with the graphics on low, because that's just how I play games. I hop into it for the first time, I put the graphics on low, I don't change it. So here's a snippet of gameplay with the graphics on max. Now honestly, I can't really go and tell the difference between max and low, but I don't go and play these type of games for the looks anyway, so it's a null point to me. Moving on to the classes, we've got the Pointman, Rifleman, and Sniper, and I love what the developers have done. Each class has a decent pool of primary weapons that only they can go and use, and all of these weapons are accessible during the closed beta phase. You can also go and change out your secondary weapon, knife, grenade, and gear, and it doesn't go and affect your character too much, but it's a little bit of customization that goes and just changes the character up a little bit. The new UI makes it super easy to go and equip these weapons, and it brings the class mechanic of AVA back to the basics. You go to your character tab, you click the weapon that you want to go and equip, and that's it. You hop in the game, you play, very, very simple. Furthermore, you can go and customize your weapons, be it with optics, laser sights, grips, etc. 
Now it's not super detailed, but it goes and gives a bit of extra customization to make your weapon yours, which is really cool. And what I also like is, for example, if you put a barrel on your weapon, you might go and increase the damage, but in turn, you would go and reduce your range. So it's not just put every attachment on, you have to go and think about how you're going to use that weapon in game. And I like that type of thought being put into the system. What I can't go and comment on, however, is the weapon balance. It seems to be in a good spot, not too many people complaining from what I can go and see in game or in the Discord or whatever, but I'm not an AVA veteran, so I'm not the best person to go and ask about this. Now talking a bit more about the gameplay, there is two available modes right now, that being Team Deathmatch and Demolition, which is basically Bomb Defusal. It's extremely bare bones right now, but that's absolutely fine. Get the rest of the game in a great place and then focus on the extra content. The developers have also said they want to allow esports for Demolition and another mode called Annihilation. And it feels like Dog Tag is a good game to go and get a competitor scene going. Everything is just so stripped back. It's just you and your gun versus the enemy team and it's brutal. With aim kick being extremely prevalent, you need to go and hit your headshots and that simply means the better player will win. No BS about it. The lobby system has been replaced by matchmaking, but it's the type of matchmaking I absolutely love as it goes and keeps the same lobbies. Having the ability to talk to people in the next game and the game after that and the game after that is awesome because you can go and hold conversations and get to know people and make some friends. Iron Sight is my favourite free to play first person shooter right now, but one thing I hate about it is its matchmaking. When you go and finish a match, it takes you out of the room sometimes and then tries to go and put you into another room so you go and get into a game faster. It sounds good in theory, but I rather wait 20-30 seconds and stay in the same room so I can go and hold my conversations with the people I was talking to in the previous game. I love custom rooms. I wish every game was custom room based where I could just go and join the specific map and mode that I want to go and play, but that's not how it works now because everybody uses matchmaking simply because it's easier. Iron Sight, it doesn't care if you were the same people. AVA Dog Tag, it does, and that is a really, really good thing that I don't think many people go and touch on, but it's really important to me. Moving a bit more into the future. Red Duck have put together a quite comprehensive roadmap of what they plan to go and implement into AVA Dog Tag. Now you can go and check it out for yourself, but there is a few things I want to go and point out. Steam Marketplace, one new mode, rank matching, esports platform, all by open beta. That is a very big commitment, and having a competitive platform all ready for when the game comes out is fantastic. I'm generally quite apprehensive about esports into games, and I'm still apprehensive here, However, AVA has a long history behind it, a very dedicated fan base, so it would be very interesting to go and see how this plays out. So overall, I'm actually really happy with the game right now, but I won't be playing it any further because of two things. The first is because of the North American server situation. It's just impossible for me to go and play the game properly. Games like Ironside have lag compensation inbuilt, but it seems like there is very minimal of that in AVA Dog Tag. And to be honest, that is a very, very good thing. In Ironside, I shoot people behind walls because I'm lagging, and the game says, okay, I can go and do that. I am happy, but the person getting shot behind walls isn't happy. In this case, I'm the one lagging, I'm the one where my shots are not registering, and that is fair because I'm the one that is putting myself at that disadvantage. The people with a good ping should be the people that, you know, dictate the gameplay, right? If you're all connecting to the North American server and then you have a 250 ping lagger versus a 40 to 50 ping person from North America, the person, if we're shooting at the same time, that wins should be the North American player. Simply because it's fair. I'm putting myself at a disadvantage. I shouldn't go and get an advantage out of it. It makes absolutely no sense. But the thing that goes and bums me out a little bit is Alliance of Valiant Arms, the old version, has servers in Asian countries, Japan, Thailand, I believe. And that means I don't think we're going to go and get an Asian server for this game anytime soon, nor do I think there is the play base for it at this time. Later down the line, I would love an Australian server, but free-to-play first-person shooters in Australian servers, they don't go very much hand-in-hand -hand because there just simply isn't enough people. So... Given that situation, I'm, my hand is kind of forced not to go and play the game. And that's actually kind of sad because the sniping, I want to go and talk about the sniping just for a little bit. It's really, really good. 
Games nowadays have these scoping animations and all these fancy type stuff, but free to play first person shooters generally are quite back to the back to basics and very bare bones, and that's how I like it because it puts the emphasis on the aiming and puts emphasis on movement rather than all the flashy gimmicks. So in the case of Alliance of Valiant Arms Dog Tag, this you just right click, you scope in with your sniper, you can go and dominate people. It's great. There's a lot of aim punch, so you have to go and aim for the head. It's a very skill-based game. That's great. Very, very, very cool thing. Now, this section was supposed to be me complaining about the game, so let me go and get back on track and start complaining a little bit more. The game doesn't have a raw input option in the settings. I can go and feel my mouse. It is a little bit sticky. It is a little bit tilting if I go and miss a shot and I'm like, damn, my mouse just didn't feel good in that scenario. And I learned after my whole gameplay recording session that I could go and turn on raw input by going into the config file and editing it there, but there needs to be an option in the settings. Now, most people right now would be asking, hmm, why didn't they go and turn on raw input by default? Now, that is a very, very good question and the developers went and answered it. The TLDR version is raw input has always been off for the lifespan of Alliance of Valiant Arms. So going and turning it on would go and alienate the player base. And the same thing has basically happened in Combat Arms. Combat Arms always had a bug where you use 500 hertz or 1000 hertz mices and your aim would just go so wonky. And also mouse moving was on by default. And so that meant that people just playing for so many years this way. And that means if they just went and reverted all these changes, which they did, people were like, oh, my mouse is broken. But no, the, the issue is being fixed, but they are just kind of, their brain's thinking this must be wrong because this isn't the way I've played it. So having the option up to the player would be good. So chuck that in the settings, uh, Red Duck, make sure to go and have a raw input option. A lot of people would go and appreciate it. To go and sum it all up, Dog Tag is the pure core version of AVA, and I love this direction. It feels like they've gone back eight years and that's absolutely fantastic. But it also makes me a little bit sad because I would love this direction for combat arms. I know I'm stealing the limelight away from AVA Dog Tag. I've said all these good things, but I do have to just go and mention one thing. If this was the direction for combat arms for the classic update, where they brought it all the way back to 2009, you had just the Cool, cool gameplay. No pay to win. Very few modes, well, the modes that were at launch, the maps, the core maps, oh my god, I, I wouldn't be playing any other game, I'd just be playing Combat Arms Classic, but alas, they, they butchered the whole, butchered the whole Combat Arms Classic, and now that dream is dead, so the fact that Alliance of Valiant Arms fans can now enjoy this game, which is like the 2000 and like 9, 10, 11, whatever, whenever this game was out, that type of version, it, it's so, so cool, it is so, so cool, and I feel so happy for the people that now can go and play their game the way they wanted to go and play it for so many years. Without pay to win, back to the basics, raw gameplay, skillful gameplay, and, and that's just absolutely fantastic. So with all of that said, I'm very happy with AVA Dog Tag. Make sure to go and give it a download when it goes into open beta. If you want to go and try it in closed beta, you can go and find some keys hanging around through the Discord, and you can go and ask some people, I suppose. But it's currently closed. It will be open very, very soon. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to go and give it a like rating. But other than that, Undercover Dudes, all the way from down under. Out.